we'll watch now about a three minute video about Swamiji's life. I'd like to begin, like to begin by, reading by reading from my new book, which probably most of you have seen already. The commentary is the essence of the Bhagavad Gita. Among thousands of men, scarcely one strives for spiritual perfection. And among those blessed ones who seek me, scarcely one out of many thousands perceives me as I am. Father, now that I wander with thee, flowers and fields seem alive with thy joy. I couldn't set aside his words to me. Your life is one of intense activity and meditation. His statement, your work is lecturing and writing, and his frequent charge to me, you have a great work to do. Moreover, I had dedicated this incarnation to spreading his work. I live for nothing else. Well, what is life really like after death? And I started to write a novel about this, and I, I was very interested in what it's all about. And I remember at the age of 15, I decided that the answer, that what the world needs is examples of communities, of small gr groups of people who try to live an idealistic life, and uh, in their idealism set an example for others. Father, now that I dance in thy name, He came into this world not to show us what a great man he was. He came to show us how great we are. He came to remind us of the God within. Father, now that I wander with thee, flowers and fields seem alive with thy joy. All that I owned to thee I've given, now I sing in thy love I am free. Father, now that I dance in thy name, birds and animals share in my song. All my sorrows, all my merriment, join in music to set hearts aflame. Ora, Padre, che vivo in te, fiori e alberi cantano amor. Niente mio è tutto tuo, vivo in te nella libertà. Ora, Padre, che danzo in te, festeggia tutta la terra con me. Tutti i fratelli miei s'uniscono per lodarti, o oh nostro Signore. My thought in the background of my mind was, boy, this will be a good story to tell. <laughs> This is such a wonderful time of year for all of us who have come to Ananda throughout Europe and in India, throughout America, <clears throat> because Swamiji has been our channel to the light. He's been our channel to master his teachings, his techniques, and he's been our best friend, friend and guide. <clears throat> and uh, here at Ananda Village on his birthday, there will be a long meditation in the morning. And then here at the Cristo Hermitage, where I am outside, there'll be a big gathering, whole community, as we often did with Swamiji. I mean, often, it was every year <clears throat> when Swamiji was here in America. And I was remembering those days when a Swamiji would have a big breakfast with a few close friends, that would be 100 people. And we would all be bringing in dishes, things that he liked to eat, and people in the kitchen, people in the dining room, and <clears throat> in the dome, and <clears throat> everywhere. And um, in the afternoon, there would be hundreds of people who would come out for Swamiji's birthday. And there would be many, many presents, hundreds of presents, and people would come, and everyone would take Swamiji's blessings and give a gift. And I remember the gifts that he enjoyed 
the most. They weren't outward gifts. People would give a card and they would say some quality they aspired towards or some attitude that wasn't right that they wanted to get rid of or some desire or some attachment that they wanted, they offered it to God through Swamiji that they wanted to rid that in this year. And, uh, or some people said, I want to get, do more Kriyas or go deeper in meditation or love God more or have more devotion. Swamiji loved those gifts more than anything else. And so tonight I would like to share with you a few of the qualities, a few of the, all of them will have a story with them of <clears throat> things that I learned from Swamiji, and I hope they're helpful to you. The first is that Swamiji was a very true friend. Everyone here and everyone, I've been seeing friends from that I've known for 40, 45 years here at the village, and everyone felt Swamiji was their best friend. And you would ask this one or that one, Swamiji, he's my best friend. And he was that. He would call you when you were low. He would take you out. He would, he, how did he remember all the birthdays of everybody? I have no idea. But you always got a gift, a phone call. He would call you over. Um, maybe he called you for a movie. He thought about everybody here. And that wasn't just here. That was when he was also in uh, Italy because <clears throat> I spent some time there with Swamiji and I don't know I don't know how he remembered all the names and all the birthdays and and then I remember one time in Italy when he was about to leave and uh, go back to America and a few of us were staying there uh, it was a startup time and the work and we were actually in um Switzerland in the south of Switzerland right near the border of Italy and we would go there often with Swamiji and we had a wonderful time there uh, with him in Switzerland so Swamiji was we were in this big department store and uh, he was going around and he had a basket and he was buying things and he would put this in the basket and then uh, whoever was nearby, and I was nearby many times, he would say, do you think this person would like this gift? And this was Christmas time. And, and I said, yes, Swamiji. And they, well, do you think that, I mean, there were, there were a lot of people he was buying gifts for it. And at a certain point, I said, Swamiji, it's okay. You, you don't have to get gifts for us. And he says, no, no, you people are staying here for Christmas. You need presents. And it was just so endearing. Let's see Swamiji going around the store, putting things in the basket, thinking about this person, then that person would like this. He didn't just buy things. He would ask, do you think this person would like it? And that was just how he was. He was always thinking, what was best for you? What was best for your spiritual growth? How he could support you? How he could encourage you? How he could love you more? How he could give God's love to you more? And I have a book worth of stories of how he supported me and all the people that I know here. And so the first thing was Swamiji was a very, very dear friend and the, our best friend. And I don't know if I told this story, it's hard because I give so many of these classes, but <clears throat> I'll tell it if you've heard it, well, you can hear it again. That one time I, I was leaving India, coming back to America, and it was, it was a difficult time at the beginning of Ananda India. And as many of you know, who were there. <clears throat> and so I came back and I was struggling. Should I be in America? Should I go back to India? And, uh, you know, it was a hard time for me. And so um, some of my friends called from India, Nirmala and Leela. And they just called to see how I was doing. And I said, well, I don't know. I'm not doing so well. And, and then they said, Swamiji's here. He just walked into the room. And I said, please do not give the phone to Swamiji. Don't. 
hello, Diana. So she came on and I, and I could feel my energy start lifting up already. And he says, how are you? And, and I said, well, Swamiji says, well, what are you doing there at Ananda Village? And I said, well, Swamiji, I'm doing this and that. And then I said, I tried to get something positive. I said, well, I'm reading your books. He says, well, which ones? And I said, well, this one and that one and this one. He said, what did you like about this particular book? And I said, well, I, and my energy is rising the whole time. And I said, well, I liked, you know, that chapter on such and such. He says, what did you like about that chapter? And I said, well, I like that. And there, all the time my energy is rising. <laughs> I like that point. What about the other book? And then the other book. And he held me on the phone. It was at least between 12 and 15 minutes talking about his books. And, and by the end of that, I was completely fine. And when he felt I was fine, he just says, okay, bye-bye. <laughs> he just hung up the phone. And that was, that was so beautiful. I was so touched by that because it was master just helping me. And I know at one time of struggle, Swam, I thanked Swamiji and he says, Diana, master's helping you. And I just went, whoa, <laughs> but he was right. It was master through Swamiji. Another point is being positive and willing when I came to Ananda, I wasn't either one of those really, but Swamiji got into you to be positive and willing because he kept giving you things to do to lift your energy up. And um, I remember uh, one time when we were, what was that? Yeah, there was a meeting <clears throat> about Australia. I've told this story, but it's a fabulous story because I lived in, well, I didn't live there, but I visited Australia for two months for Ananda to help get our work started. And it wasn't easy. It was not easy at all. And um, in fact, it, it didn't succeed. So we came back and then we were at a meeting with about eight or 10 other people and Swamiji and Swamiji wanted to know how did it go? I mean, I mean should we do a work in Australia? And, and, and I was the first person next to him and, and I had a long list of why we shouldn't go back to Australia. No, we shouldn't do Swamiji, no Australia. And he just went, next. <laughs> I just didn't want to hear it. And people did go back to Australia and they lived there. And we did have a work for a few years in Australia. Now it's online, but he didn't want negativity. He wanted you to think of something that was good about it always. And to be willing to lift your energy up to do that. The next is how to be happy through serving. Now, a lot of people think service isn't important, but I can say, wow, it really is. And I remember... Swamiji would just, he, I would say in the almost 40 something years, 45 years or however long I've been on the path, I can say that Swamiji sat down and talked to me personally. I could add up the time that he actually sat down and told me something I need to work on or counseled me. Maybe it adds up to 15 minutes. Wow. So what did he do? He kept giving you things to use your energy to lift your energy up. And I would go, now Swamiji, I was thinking, he said, here, do this. And I said, Swamiji, I have one question. Here, help me with this. Swamiji, can you help me? I need help over here. And I remember in India, when I first got there, I would be going from B10 by eight, those who know the main ashram house, the Swamiji's house, just running back and forth all day long. I was exhausted. And I remember doing uh, errands and things for him. So one day, one time, at, it was about midnight. I was just going back home late at night. And it happened every day. And, and I thought, gosh, I've got so many problems, but I have no time. And this was exactly what I needed. No time to think about myself. Just serve, 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 and you get out of the problems. He was a magician at that. I think he created jobs for people. He just thought up things. Why don't you do this? Why don't you help over there? Why don't you help me with this? And, and he kept everybody running and busy. Otherwise, he would have been sitting for hours and hours, days and days, weeks and weeks, months and months, years from 
years and years counseling people. So he helps you to lift your energy up. And the next one is how to work hard till you get the job done. I learned that from Swamiji. I mean, most of us would get to a certain point and say, oh, it's too hard now. This is good enough, isn't it? So we were putting together some Jayaji and I, Kriya booklets, question answer booklets. There, there are a variety of them now that you Kriya bonds out there would have seen. And so the very first one, I was just so happy to put that together. And so Jayaji did the inside, he did the editing. And I was in charge of the cover and getting it printed and everything. And so uh, I just went out to the park with, uh, you know, a few people and we took pictures for the cover. I got one picture of one of the monks, he was meditating and, you know, I thought he hey, looks pretty good to me. It was Devendra for those who know him. And so um, we put that on the cover. I, I, we, I mean, I can't express to you how happy we were to have this first Kriya book. So we put that cover on and um, I was so thrilled when we, we made the book and we made 2000 copies. So then I sent some over to Italy and so the word comes back, Swamiji doesn't like the covers of the book. And I just thought, what does the cover have to do? <laughs> I mean, it has to do with Kriya. <laughs> And so Shivani from Italy said, I, I wrote back and he said, you're sure? And she said, no, Swamiji doesn't like the cover. So uh, what did I do? I wrote Swamiji a long email about why we couldn't change the covers. We made 2000 of these, it costs so much money. Isn't a monk on the cover okay? All, on and on. And Swamiji didn't write me back <laughs> for a long time. <laughs> days and days went by and I was getting more and more anxious and no response from Swamiji. Two weeks went by. By then I was perspiring. I was like, I'm really out of tune. So finally I wrote Swamiji and I said, because I it came to me so clearly, it's you. You need to listen to Swamiji. So I wrote Swamiji and I said, Swamiji, I'd be happy to take all those covers off. We have people here who can help. Here's a couple of possibilities with master on the cover. If you would choose for us, we would be so grateful. Swamiji wrote me within five minutes. And he said, if you were to ask me, I would choose this cover. And we got that cover, we got all the other covers off, we put those on. And the wonderful thing was after that, we published seven more of those Kriya books, one after the other, they came out fast. I was blocking the whole thing by saying, oh, I don't wanna do it, it's too much work. But to work to the point, serve to the point of success, doing it right and getting the job done right is very important on the path. And finally, loyalty. Wow. <clears throat> Swamiji Master said, loyalty is the highest law of God. And Master told Dr. Lewis, you know, asked him, would he always be loyal? And also with Swamiji, Swamiji was loyal to the very end to Master. And at Ananda Village, when I came, which was in 78, there were all kinds of people who came here and Swamiji invited many of them. There were many Indian gurus who came through, many, not many, but some people walked right out of the community with them. There were people who were healers, people walked right out of the community with the healers. And <clears throat> there were people who had uh, uh, cylinders that healed you, you wear it on the airplane, put it in front of the computer. There were people who had sound boxes that healed you if you just turn on the right frequency. Uh, there was a man who stared into your eyes and he just was changing your vibration by staring into your eyes. There was another man who had colored lights and he would beam those lights into your eyes as you were lying back. And I did all of it and, <laughs> and some of it Swamiji did. And then I remember one, we were at this place near Ananda that had this um, energy box, this big box in this room, this small room. 
about four or five of us were in that room with Swamiji. It was supposed to like, you know, change your vibration, uplift you and give you energy. And as I was sitting there, I thought, why are we in here? Because we have Swamiji, we don't need this machine. But I think he wanted us to figure it out. And the biggest one was for me when someone told me I should eat a particular kind of food, which I hadn't eaten for dozens and dozens of years. And uh, finally, I, I, I was sneaking eating that <laughs> food. And then I thought I should ask Swamiji. So I, when I finally got Swamiji, I was able to ask him. I'll never forget, he was, he was sipping his punch. He was in our open house at the Sangha. He was sip, sipping his punch. And I asked him about this particular thing uh, of eating this particular food. And he just went, <laughs> I'll never forget. And he said, why are you listening to him? He's no saint. And all my friends were there. So they were all like, Diana. <laughs> but I'm telling you all these things because Swamiji saved me. He saved all of us from going here and there. I've seen so many people come and go, come and go. Like Swamiji said, my Washington was like a hotel. People checked in, they checked out. Well, it was the same a lot of times with Swamiji. But by the time Swamiji, I remember when he left India, I just remember the smile on his face. He was so happy with the work there and with everybody and all the seva and the attunement and everything. And that's what I think he wants everyone to feel now, especially in India for his birthday. He was very happy, very proud of everyone. I'm very pleased with Master's work there. So now I'll ask Natendra to uh, come on. <clears throat> and we have a couple of questions. Yes, Dhyanaji, thank you so much for sharing the wonderful stories. The first question, Dhyanaji, is Is Swamiji able to still help us now that he's no longer in the body? Yes, I asked Swamiji that question at a satsang in India if he would be able to help us. And he gave an interesting answer. He said, I really hope so. And I meditated on that and I felt he was saying, I will be there, but will you all be there? Will you be in tune enough to grasp the inspiration, the insights, the guidance, the discipline that I'm giving you? Will you be able to hear it? And secondly, can you follow it? And so those are two big things. I, I have no doubt that Swamiji is helping whoever is open to the help, who's receptive, who's whoever's willing to listen. I certainly have felt his presence almost, I, mean, I can say every day in meditation and things, decisions I need to make for Ananda India and for my own life. And I feel, cause I ask him, I think so if you ask and you listen and you try to follow, then you'll get help. And Jyotish and Devi Ji were just telling me yesterday that people would come here to the hermitage and um, I'm staying upstairs here. And they said, this was the room where Swamiji would counsel people. And we would sit with him uh, for those meetings. And people would come from distances and different people would come in. And they said, um, what was interesting is Swamiji would give advice and many times, People would walk out of that room and they would say, Swamiji said this is just perfect, isn't it? And it would be just the opposite. So I think you have to have the courage to listen and to follow. And if you do, I think you will feel Swamiji helping you in your life. Thank you, Dhanaji. We have two more questions. The first one is, okay. how can we help what Swamiji has started? And what is our path? My goodness, if you're at a center, ask the center leader how you can help. Do something to serve master's work and Swamiji's vision. If you're with home study, ask the leaders there. If you're with Hindi Sangha, ask them. If you're with yoga teacher training, meditation teacher training, any of the departments or the centers, please ask. And um, there's so many ways you can serve. 
And I think our part is Swamiji has passed the baton to us. He's given his blessing, he's given his grace, he's given his help, he's given his guide. He gave his whole life. He came, he went to India at the age of 77. My goodness. He spent the last years of his life basically in India, setting up India, planting the seeds. And so for all of us, we have to water those seeds. We have to take the baton, keep moving help people, serve people, teach the classes, teach yoga, find, maybe teach, le learn how to teach yoga or meditation and get out there and help people. Maybe at your company, oh, there's so many ways to serve, but to do nothing isn't really an option for anyone. We've received so much. We have to give back. Absolutely, Amazon. thank you. The last question is, I didn't get to meet Swamiji in person. So how can I know him better now? Yeah, good question. I would say for sure to um, listen to his talks. And I go on YouTube practically every day and I listen and watch the talks. There's so many there. If you don't have access except for YouTube, there's fabulous talks on YouTube by Swamiji. Just type in Swami Kriyananda and also read his books. There's 150 of them. I would say until you've read them all, maybe concentrate on those books and also be with those who knew Swamiji, listen to them, come to these online programs, <clears throat> go to the satsangs. You hear these kind of stories all the time that are inspiring. And so mix with people who knew Swamiji. And finally, in your own meditation, ask him to, to guide you, pray to Swamiji, ask for his help. Um, Pray to master to help you to feel uh, Swamiji's role in your life. They're, I mean, these masters are still with us. Swamiji's still with us. And so for all of us here again, I don't think it's an option. Well, Swamiji's not in the body, so now I just go straight to master. No, Swamiji is the channel for those at Ananda. And um, listen to his music as well. He said, if you want to get to know me, listen to my music. Uh, it's so beautiful. So all the music, 400 pieces, there's so many ways to be more in tune and to get to know Swamiji if you did not meet him, him in person. And finally, I'll say one last thing. Someone in India asked Swamiji, how come we didn't meet master like you did? And I loved Swamiji's answer. He said, how do you know you didn't? <laughs> I mean, there have been so many lifetimes. So for us, how do you know you didn't meet Swamiji? How do you know you didn't live in a community? How, I mean, all of us feel like brothers and sisters. And so I think we were with him and you were with him. And so better to affirm it rather than say, no, I wasn't with him. I didn't, I didn't get to be with Swamiji. And uh, just say, well, even if in this life I didn't meet Swamiji, he's living in my heart. Isn't that a beautiful prayer? He's living in my heart. He's living in my thoughts. He's living in everything that I do. So God bless you all. And now we have one final uh, video and it's about Swamiji's accomplishments. And then we'll go right into the pictures of where I am here in Swamiji's apartment. A dream time like a stream carries our burdens away. Never despair, joys everywhere. Love can be friend you today. Free from all care like birds on the air. Soar above griefs and worries, seek joy and be gay. Often on earth, things of great worth, worldly ambitions defy. Sometimes a friend helps us ascend, up from life's cares to the sky. Love 
is a star, though shining afar. It can guide us and help us toward light to draw nigh. Life is a dream, time like a stream carries our burdens away. From all care, like birds on the air, soar above griefs and worries, seek joy and be gay. Often on earth, things of great worth, worldly ambitions defy. Sometimes a friend. Us ascend up from life's cares to the sky. Love is a star, though shining afar, it can guide us and help us toward light to draw nigh. Love is a star, though shining afar. pictures. Now we'll show Swamiji's apartment pictures. The bedroom. The bath and part of Swamiji's bedroom kitchen, this was in his uh, study and in the office. The office and then the sitting area and that's Swamiji's meditation room on the left. And as you come in, this beautiful Murti. Let's close, just feeling the blessings and the grace of Swamiji with us now. Let's offer our devotion, our gratitude for his life, guidance, his help, his divine friendship, all that he gave master through Swamiji to us. mentally bow in deep gratitude to this great soul. Om Shanti Shanti and Swamiji would often say that our birthday is celebrated in one way during his birthday, because we're spiritually born through what Swamiji gave us of master. So we often say on Swamiji's birthday to each other, happy birthday. God bless you.